Hello students, how are you all? I hope you all are keeping well. So, I am Priyanka Singh, your science teacher. Today I am here to start with the chapter 10 of class 7 that is transportation in animals and plants. In multicellular organisms, the number of materials that move in and out of the body is large. The distance over these materials are to be transported is also large. Therefore, these organisms require a specialized system to support various functions inside the body. Human beings have developed circulatory system. The circulatory system in humans. The circulatory system carries the blood from the heart to different parts of the body and bring it back to the heart an extra mile. Human body contains 4 to 6 liters of blood. The circulatory system in humans consists of the blood, blood vessels, heart. These are described below. Blood. Blood is a red colored viscous fluid. It flows in the blood vessels. Functions of blood. Blood supplies food from intestine to every cell of the body. It carries oxygen from lungs to body cells. It removes wastes from the cells. It helps in regulating body temperature. It protects body against infection. The blood has two components, plasma and blood cells or corpuscles. Blood cells or corpuscles are of three kinds. Red blood corpuscles that is RBCs. These have oxygen carrying pigment called hemoglobin. It gives red color to the corpuscles, hence red blood corpuscles. It binds with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin, which transport oxygen to all the body cells. White blood corpuscles, that is WBCs. These defend the body against infection, they fight against germ and also provide immunity against infection. The white blood corpuscles are called soldiers of the body. Blood platelets. These are very minute cells present in the blood. They help to stop bleeding by clotting the blood. As you seen in the picture, these are red blood cells, white blood cells, blood platelets, blood plasma and blood serum some blood cells role of blood in oxygen transport respiration is a process in which oxygen gas as air is inhaled and the carbon dioxide is exhaled blood transports these gaseous compounds through hemoglobin present in red blood cells rbc hemoglobin is a globular protein in lungs, where oxygen is present in higher concentration, hemoglobin combines with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin. In tissues, where oxygen content is low, oxyhemoglobin dissociates and releases oxygen for use in respiration reaction. Blood vessels. Blood vessels are tube-like structures that transport blood throughout the body. There are three types of blood vessels. Arteries veins and capillaries arteries arteries carries oxygen rich oxygen rated blood from the heart and distributed to all parts of the body the pulmonary artery is an exception as it carry deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs arteries have thick elastic walls to allow stretching and to deal with the high pressure of blood coming from the heart Veins. Veins are the blood vessels which carry carbon dioxide rich blood or deoxygenated blood from the body organs back to the heart. Pulmonary veins is an exception as it carries oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart. Veins have thin elastic walls. The diameter of vein is greater than that of arteries. These are superficially placed. The blood pressure in the veins is low. There are a series of walls present in veins. They help prevent backflow and allow blood to flow only towards the heart. Capillaries. 
Capillaries are extremely thin blood vessels which connect arteries to veins. Through the thin walls of the capillaries exchange of materials take place. The useful substances like food and oxygen present in the blood pass into the blood cells through the capillaries. At the same time, the waste product like carbon dioxide formed in the blood cells enter into the blood through the thin walls of capillaries. So students, are you able to see the picture? This is the picture of blood capillary and on the one side there is an artery and the other side is the vein. So are you able to see this chart? This chart is showing the difference between the artery, vein and capillary. Okay. So let's see what is the difference between in these three. So some differences between artery, vein and capillary are described below. Artery. Thick walled carry oxygen rich blood from the heart to other parts of the body. Vein. Thin walled carry carbon dioxide rich blood from different organs to the heart. Capillary. Thin walled thin capillaries are involved in the exchange of food materials, respiratory gases and body wastes. Again artery situated deeper under the skin. Veins situated just under the skin. Capillary occur at the terminal of artery and vein. Now we are coming to the heart. The heart is a muscular organ present in the chest cavity located between the lungs slightly tilted towards the left. Its function is to pump the blood to all parts of the body. Your heart is approximately the size of your fist. So this is the diagram of a human heart. The heart is enclosed in a double layered membranous sac called pericardium. The heart has four compartments called chambers. The upper two chambers are called auricles. They have thin walls and receive blood from different parts of the body and the lower two chambers are called ventricles. Blood from ventricles is pumped out of the heart. The left side of the heart has oxygen rich blood also called oxygenated blood where as the right side of the heart has carbon dioxide rich blood also called deoxygenated blood. The left side of the heart is completely separated from its right side by means of a partition called septum which prevents the mixing of oxygenated blood with the deoxygenated blood. The blood flows from the auricles to ventricles through walls. The wall between right auricle and right ventricle is called tricuspid valve and that between the left auricle and left ventricle is called bicuspid valve. Blood circulation in the body. The impure blood, blood containing carbon dioxide from different parts of the body enters the right auricle and is sent to the right ventricle. From here the blood is pumped through the pulmonary artery to the lungs for deoxygenation. In lungs this blood gives up carbon dioxide and absorbs oxygen from the inhaled air. This oxygenated blood returns to the left auricle through pulmonary vein and then enters the left ventricle. From here, the blood is pumped through aorta to different parts of the body. As the blood passes through the capillaries oxygen and then nutrients are delivered to the cells and carbon dioxide and the other wastes are picked up by the blood. This carbon dioxide rich or deoxygenated blood goes back to the right auricle. An extra mile, the contraction phase of the heart muscles is called systole. The relaxed phase, expansion phase of the heart muscles is called diastole heartbeat and heart sound. The rhythmic contraction and relaxation of auricles and ventricles is known as heartbeat. Human heart beats 72 times per minute. 
one heartbeat includes a phase of relaxation of heart muscles and general pause diastole a phase of contraction of heart muscles systole during diastole heart receives blood and during systole first atria contracts to push the blood into ventricles and then ventricles contract to pump blood into blood vessels thus contraction of atrial chambers and then ventricular chambers are the two phases of heartbeat these two phases of heartbeat can be heart as lap and dub sounds the sound of heartbeat is caused by the contraction of muscles and shutting down the walls in the lap phase the ventricles contract and cuspid valves close in the dub phase the pulmonary and aortic valves close a normal heart repeats these lap dub sounds about 72 times per minute our doctors use a stethoscope to hear this lap dub sound pulse and pulse rate each time the heart pumps the blood out it rushes through the arteries and produces a twitching movement or throbbing called pulse an extra mile heart beat heart rate and pulse rate are alternative names each heartbeat cause a pulse in the artery the pulse can be feel at various places on the body with inner wrist neck temple the number of pulse beats per minute is called pulse rate for a normal resting person the pulse rate is usually less between 12 to 80 pulse per beat per minute Generally pulse rate is measured by feeling the pulse at inner wrist pulse rate increases with physical exercise an extra mile heart beat and pulse rate of a person under similar conditions have the same value excretion in animals numerous biochemical reaction occur around the clock in all living cells they produce a variety of waste products like carbon dioxide ammonia and other nitrogenous compounds if they accumulate in the body they prove to be toxic the process of removing toxic wastes from the body is called excretion and the organs that remove these toxic wastes are called excretory organs major types of body wastes types of wastes example system of eliminating them so children are you able to see this table so types of waste gaseous waste example carbon dioxide system of eliminating them respiratory system solid waste feces digestive system chemical waste water salt urea etc urine and sweat excretory system and skin excretion in humans the human body has specific organs for the removal of solid liquid and gaseous body wastes the main organs for excretion in human beings are lungs skin large intestine kidneys anus and urethra in humans excretion involves the removal of urea sweat and undigested food these body wastes are removed as given solid waste the solid waste generated in the body is removed as feces through the ns respiratory waste the respiratory waste carbon dioxide and water vapor are carried by the blood to the lung the alveoli in the lungs remove carbon dioxide from the blood and is exhaled through the nose water salt urea etc the sweat glands under the skin remove water salts urea etc from the blood flowing through blood capillaries in the skin by diffusion these wastes are the throw out of the body through tiny pores of the skin liquid waste the liquid waste of the body is removed by the excretory or urinary system in the form of urine excretory system in human beings excretory system in human has a pair of kidneys a pair of ureters 
a urinary bladder and a urethra kidneys kidneys are brown colored bean shaped organ present in the abdominal cavity one on either side of backbone each kidney has a large number of long coil tubules called nephrons these are structural as well as functional units of kidneys they act as filters they remove nitrogenous waste and water from blood while it passes through kidneys the renal artery brings blood to the kidneys and renal vein takes it away in kidneys excess of water and nitrogenous wastes are removed in the form of urine the urine is removed from the kidneys by a pair of tubes called ureters it is collected and stores in the urinary bladder and is finally disposed of through urinary opening located at the end of urethra the urethra is a muscular tube dialysis dialysis is the separation of large molecules from smaller ones in their solution with the help of semi permeable membrane human beings have two kidneys if one kidney is damaged the other kidney fulfills the excretory needs but if both the kidneys are damaged the person cannot survive because of the accumulation of toxic wastes in the body therefore the nitrogenous wastes from the blood are periodically removed by artificially kidney or the dialysis machine dialysis The removal of nitrogenous wastes from blood with the help of a machine is called artificial dialysis. Transportation of substances in plants. There are three different kinds of plants for example herbs, shrubs and trees. Though they completely may vary but the mode of transport in all the three types is the same. plants have a well developed transport system it is called vascular system it has two main functions it transport water and minerals dissolved in water from roots to all the aerial parts of the plant it transport the food synthesized in leaves to various parts of the plant right up to the roots vascular system vascular system consists of pipe like vessels arranged to the end they extend from tips of roots to the tips of leaves passing through the stem the vascular system is also called conducting tissues it is formed of two types of cell also known as vessels xylem vessels and phloem vessels xylem vessels the xylem vessels transport water and dissolved minerals upward from roots through stems to the tips of leaves against the force of gravity this upward movement of water and minerals is called ascent of sap phloem vessel these carry food synthesized by the leaves downwards to all parts of the plant transport of water and minerals Plants extract water and minerals from the soil through the roots here that have direct contact with the water inside the soil. The water and minerals dissolved in it move through a special pipe-like tissues present in plants called xylem. Xylem has a wide network spread in all parts of the plant and thus carries water and minerals from the root to the leaves translocation of food the transport of food from leaves to all other parts of plant is called translocation the food in manufactured in the mesophyll cells of the leaf from mesophyll cells it enters into the sieve types of phloem as dilute solution and is transported to all known green parts of the plant Phloem also transport amino acids and hormones synthesized in the types of shoots and root transpiration the loss of water in the form of vapor from the leaves of plant into the air is called transpiration transpiration occurs through stomata in the leaves through the process of diffusion factors affecting transpiration transpiration is affected by the following factors time of the day 
The stomata in leaves are open during the day and close at night. So, more transpiration takes place during the day than at night. Temperature. The rate of transpiration is faster at higher temperature. So, transpiration on a hot day is more than that on a cool day. Humidity. On a humid day, the transpiration is lower because the air already contains a lot of moisture. Wind. Wind increases the rate of transpiration. This is because the wind takes away water vapor from the neighborhood leaves. Light. Light increases the rate of transpiration. This is because light causes the stomata to open. Importance of transpiration. Transpiration helps the trees plants in the following manner. It produces cooling effect thereby saving the delicate cells from the heat of the sunlight. Transpiration helps in the movement of water from roots upward. So it's time to readers digest. The circulatory system carries the blood from the heart to different parts of the body and brings back to the heart. Blood is a red colored viscous fluid. Blood vessels are tube-like structures that transport blood throughout the body. The heart is a muscular organ present in the chest cavity located between the lungs, slightly tilted towards the left. The rhythmic contraction and relaxation of auricles and ventricles is known as heart beat. Kidneys are brown colored bean shaped organs present in the abdominal cavity, one on either side of backbone. So, students. It's time to take your leave. Bye. We'll meet in the next class.